Okay, Assalamualaikum dan sama sejahtera guys um, Welcome again to my um, online uh, recorded class which um, as you can see now it's been uploaded on YouTube on my YouTube channel um, So this is the replacement class and um, so uh, we like to I would like to continue the explanations from the previous lesson plan I mean the, the from the lesson from the previous lesson and um, there is still some explanation need to do to complete for these uh, explanations so this is uh, game level designs I believe previously um, We've been, I've been explaining about these uh, set of challenge the player will face within the levels, uh, the terminations, conditions of the levels. Uh, uh, and today I will continue about these uh, aesthetic and mode of the levels. Uh, I would like to start with these, with the information about um, how you come up with the concept design when you design uh, games um, it really depends on the creativity of the art director actually if the art director is a quite a good one so by right you should have a good concepts a good design concepts it's almost like uh, i'm giving you guys an example it's almost like you should think you should think a movie when you shoot a movie, uh, there is a art director and there is a film director. The functions of the film director is to record the movie, how he was planned in his head or according to script. But it's always depend inside the head of the film director how he want to record the movie. But the scenery of the movie the props the scenery it was the jobs of the art director uh, it was very important for the art director to prepare the sets the sets of the movie the props of the movie uh, very aesthetics according to the scripts according to the gambaran according to the pictures described by the uh, by the writer, uh, by the scripter of the movie. So it's always about um, the, uh, it's always about the art director try to prepare the, the scenery according to the scripts. Uh, and uh, it's a different different jobs compared to the film director and the art director art director jobs is to make sure the scenery the props and everything is according to the scripts of the movie uh, same thing happen when you design the games uh, you have the art director which uh, the role of the art director to design a game is to make sure the concepts the overall concepts is synchronized it's mean like you cannot have too many teams in one concept designs it's always it will confuse uh, the user the audience for examples uh, for example over here if the scenery was supposed to be a haunted house it cannot mix up with suddenly uh, scenery of the uh, playground scenery of the normal backgrounds uh, then it will confuse the the audience. Uh, that's why it's very critical for the game designers to ensure, to make sure that the continuity of the uh, game scenery, uh, there is a, the, you know, the continuity of the game scenery, it happens. Uh, and the, the art director will make sure that the, the game designer will uh comply and uh will design according to the, the 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 art concept that given by the art director so 
is always to make sure that the uh, the concept design is uh, have one team and they cannot be they cannot be they can't be too many teams in a in a game designs it must be relevant it must be re related so to the game's concept to the game's design so that's why over here at the first bullet point the game designer and art director specify the overall tones of a level so you know if the in one level if the level was uh it's about a haunted house then it's always about haunted houses never can be uh the other scenery other than the haunted house so <clears throat> then we further to the uh second bullet point which is the artist create the specific models and texture so this is the job functions of the 3d artist 3d modeling artist to create the specific models and texture uh to make sure the scenery the props and everything is according to the concept design if the art director specifically wanted the video game environment was a haunted house so the artist need to create the objects, the texture, uh, the textures of the house look haunted, uh, looks like an abandoned old house, uh, creep, it's a creep environment, so very creepy. So that's the job functions of the 3D artist. And if you go further to the third bullet point, the level designers take general specifications and decide how to implement those plan basically the general specifications come up from the art directors usually we in the industry we have this uh, brainstorming session whereby everyone was sitting around and basically the art director will give a, uh, will give us specific questions the specific instructions on how to come up with these game concepts uh if it was in the, in the night times then the environment should be in the night time they cannot be suddenly in the morning time in the dawn time they should be in the night times according to the gameplay and you usually the 3d designers the designers they have their own uh, general specifications on how to implement these plans uh it is usually it was in the forms of storyboards uh written it's a written in the storyboards and will pass over to the uh, 3d designer what their 3d designer job is what their graphic designer job is what is the multimedia designer job is even if the plan says level 13 will be sc scary haunted house the level designer decide what kind of house and how to make it feel scary. So this is the general specifications that provide from the art director. Uh, for example, the art director say, okay, I want it in the level 13 will be a scary haunted house. So it's up to the designers to think of what the looks of the haunted house and how the looks and feel of the haunted house and how to make it a real scary so this is part of uh, game design that's very important we're talking about um, uh, we're talking about uh, texture we're talking about uh, many aspects lighting include lighting uh, angles uh, okay then we move to this um this one which is uh, is explained here level designers normally construct all these things using tools created specifically for the purpose so as a designer as a multimedia designer as a game designer uh, you must construct all these things using tools created specifically specifically for the purpose um, the normal 
usually use forms of software such as Adobe Photoshop. If you want to do the texture, if you want to play around with the lightings, you can use Cinema 4D, for example. Uh, last time we use 3D Studio, 3D Max, uh, include with Cinema 4D, but today you can always use um, you can always use uh, other software, uh, especially uh, design uh, game software to include in, in your constructions, um, such as Unity, for example. They have the, ability, have the ability to construct all these things. But to start it first, usually we use a simple software such as Photoshop and 3D Max. Uh, okay, to the bullet, to the another bullet point, which is some games actually um, ship their level design tools along with the game, so the players can expand and customize the game world. So some game. Uh, ship the level design tools so uh, this is the capability that design for the user to enhance the and to customize the game world for, for example uh, super mario bros you can always design some of the levels according to your uh, desired uh, so it's come along with a tool, a simple tool basically, so you can customize, so the players can expand the game world. So, so it's part of the option that given to you. Okay, now we're moving forward to the new chapters, uh, which is key design principles. Um, well, there is two types of design principles to design a level, universal level design principles and general specific level design principles. Um, so, there are, you, it, uh, you should be remember when you design something even in fact if you design a simple poster uh, for campaign for example if you design a simple poster there is always a key design principle first if you design a poster you must put a text for to explain about the information about the poster then you use pictures you use graphics you use image um, to enhance the information given on the poster so same thing goes for if you design for the games uh, so there is a guideline for the key design principles and uh, there is a universal level design principles and general specific level uh, in the universal level design principles um, usually it's a quite universal that you aim at designing levels in any kind of games uh, by make the early levels of a game tutorials level for example you must provide the tutorial levels uh, for the user to, to better understand about your game concepts and usually it will vary on the passings of the levels each level uh, have been uh, come up with the different game tutorials and this is kind of normal for you to learn a bit about the levels about who is the villain who is the enemy who is the the villain boss enemy boss and all that so basically how you supposed to how you can do it uh, what task that you need to do so this is the this the, the universal level designs um, and 
simple but uh, the, but simple but not least the most uh, stuff that you need to provide is the uh, resources uh, for example if you play uh, Nintendo games and um, sport Nintendo sport games and uh, if you out of energy for example uh, there is always uh, the option for you to to boost up your energy by collecting it can be fruits by eating by collecting fruits eating fruits you boost up your energy um, in some of the games uh, for example games that related to dungeons and dragons for example mystics kind of games it's always uh, resources came from this uh, spirits come from the spell if you read the spell it can boost give you a good resources again so this is kind of stuff that you must remember when you design the game so this is the three principles um okay avoid conceptual non sequiturs um unless your level is either intense intentionally surreal or main to be funny you shouldn't build things that make no sense such as room accessible only via ventilation set so logically if you try to do game designs uh, the key principles if you try to build something it have to be sense why you build the stuff the more logics uh, you can provide the stuff the more logics to the humans the more experience the more logic to the human experience the more the the game design will be played by the by the human for example that's why if you uh if you try to design something that related to space adventure uh you can play around with something surreal because by right human never experience space adventure so in a space explorations one or two two things that most important that we already know we cannot breathe air at the space that's why we need an oxygen tanks and we cannot defy gravity and because there is no gravity in the space so you must provide these two logicness in your game when you design something that related to space other than that you can play around with surreal stuff because human never really experience about space they want to experience about space so you can in intentionally try to create something surreal uh for example i'm giving you example movie uh quantum mania quantum mania the end man uh whereby he, the end man experience the the life uh, inside the quantum mania so there's there's no really uh guidance experience about what is quantum mania other than we know it's a, it's a, the theory about it so the director basically can play anything can put anything that let that he desire that he want that he wanted because uh because people never been to the quantum mania so basically you can create surreal things unless if you design something that related to uh games that related to war uh for example world war ii games world war ii games basically there is a history about world war ii games and there is an uh information about the world war ii so basically you cannot design something that's surreal something that absurd something that out of the history of the world war ii it would it would not make sense to the user and by rights they will have adopt to play the games all right now we moving to the uh, second bullet point which is don't put dangers or reward in place in which no sane person could possibly expect to find them so true so true if you play games usually you uh, you will general in generally universal level designs uh if you want to put something the the, the resources 
uh, the the hardships uh, power that can boost your power if you touch the heart shapes thingy usually we can put it inside the cupboard it's a normal people will search inside the cupboard we will, people will search inside the box that's why in so many games uh, mario bros for example there are so many box people will tend to understand there is always something inside the box that they can grab they can take whatever inside the box so it's a simple rules but you cannot although in some game for example in um, uh, in, in a game such as the hello h-a-l-o or maybe the old game such as uh, the quake q u a k e quakes or even even the the new games uh, games that that related to investigations um uh, where you need to uh, explore the room find the key and everything yes you are allowed to put uh dangers and reward in some places because uh, it makes sense because you need to solve a mystery but remember there is always a hint if you did not put the hint and you hidden the key inside the bottle and you put the bottle inside the cupboard then people will lose unless you put a hint okay Another explanation about the universal level design uh, clearly inform the players of his short term goals. Uh, you, when you basically you, when you design the level, basically uh, you know that you come up with these scriptures, text, hint, uh, so much information that you need to provide uh, clickable information just to explain to the user what is their short term goal sometimes it can be appeared in the forms of guidance for example if you play games of harry potter the uh, the guidance should be the uh, this the old the gandalf gandalf should be the guidance uh, gandalf will come over to you and he will whisper to you what you need to do what is your search short term goal so basically you have the guidance um so as simple as a books uh books that have a short term guidance that the, the user aware of the situations aware of the situations unless your game offers only a sandbox for player to simply play around for the fun at any given time he will be working to achieve a whole hierarchy of challenges yes. Uh, unless if you design the levels, uh, um, you design something that have the whole hierarchy of challenge, such as Maria Bros, then then it's okay, uh, understood by the user. Um, from the overall victory conditions of the game down to the problem occupying his attentions at the immediate moment. So. Uh, problem occupying his attention at the immediate moment so any moments that you come up with your level design remember uh, to to be specific in what you are uh, plan for your users and uh, for example in the victory conditions what is the plan to, uh, what is the uh, purpose what they need to do uh, so there's always a, um, a guideline some guidelines for the user so they cannot be lost uh, you can either tell the player exactly what to do or let the player to discover the long-term goal through uh, explorations or observations uh, usually it happens a lot in the games uh, 
you should never leave the player wondering what to do next. Yes, uh, this this is stuff that I found out when I access your seniors uh, final year projects. They sometimes they happen to let it go, whereby the player is wandering around, and um, that's why you need sometimes to make sure that the the your world for example is very small um very small according to your uh plan design uh if you make it your world too big and the player will go wandering around wasting times so it's not good for your game concepts um even in fact as i said that's why in in some some games you provide the guidance uh just to whisper to the player just to tell the, the player what is the current or uh, next short term goal that that they should be encountering or they they they, they should be experience later on um and another good importance that you must also consider when you design the level designs the level in the, the in the game level designs concepts you must be clear about the risk rewards and the consequences of decisions for example if you uh, i don't play uh, i don't play a uh, game of uh, gods of war ragnarok ragnarok some some uh, some call it ragnarok some call it ragnarok i don't play the games i was too busy but i love to watch uh, people play the recorded play on how the gods of war kratos kill their enemy and so on and so on with his sons um usually when kratos uh, experience uh, some things new there's always about the explanations about the risk that he will be uh, taking for example in a way for kratos to save the children uh, the child the daughter of the uh, one of the uh, character he must face thor god of thunder t h o r god of thunder he clearly understood what is his what his task is because he already know thor and what thor god of thunder is capable of so it's always about the risk that you want to explain to your user uh, the rewards and the consequences uh based on decisions uh if the uh unplanned unplanned and more an exploration game for example uh they tend to uh tend to let the user to decide uh, what happen if you take the uh a what happen if you take the b Uh, road if you take the c road what happens it's up to the uh, the user to to the player to decide what which road they want to go and of course there will there will be a clear consequences if you take uh, the road a if the kratos want to kill thor there will be the consequences but if the kratos want to spare life of thor in future there will be a consequences to kratos in god of war so there's always a consequences so when facing challenge the player should always have some idea of, of the benefit of the success and the price of failure yes this was correct so always you telling the player what happen if you chosen the the pass if you chosen the road if you if they make that decisions uh for example all video game use the learn by doing a, by dying approach which gave players no information about the elements of the game world 
so that Wata died repeatedly as the players learn. So this is the old game style. Uh, there's a term to describe the old and the new one. The new one is predictable. Uh, I don't remember the terms, but the new ones is always about exploration. It's always about giving you uh, <clears throat> options. You have option A, option B, and option C. Uh, it's always affects your rules of the game and how you play the games so the, in the old games such as um, Tekken for example Tekken 3 <coughs> for example the fighting games uh, there's not really an option for the user to uh, to further explore and then uh, make a fight with the enemy and from fighting with the enemy, they learn a few tricks and on how to kill the enemy after he died several times. Uh, for example, games like Tekken 3. Uh, nowadays, this is considered as extremely bad decision, uh, bad design practice. Yes, uh, as I said, today, uh, the good example is uh, God of War, whereby Kratos have the... the have to make decision whether he want to kill the enemy and pay the consequences or he want to be mercy he want to show a mercy say a few wisdom words to the enemy and the enemy become his friends his allies in the future that one day that can help him to kill the big boss and all that so it's up to the so it's up to the player to decide so this is the good design uh today players may not know very details of the game world he should be able uh players may not know every detail of the game world he should be able to make a reasonable guess based on the context uh, yes uh as i explained earlier uh it's always about the the hint that you give to the players uh that's why sometimes not sometimes but always you have the guidance uh that can guide you and uh in a many for example in the get a uh, gods of war Ragnarok, for examples uh kratos basically can make a reasonable guess if he try to kill uh Thor, God of Thunder, he will know, uh, he will face the Odin, which is the uh, the father of the Thor, uh, which, which will be have much more power uh, and will be difficult for him. So there, there's, there's always consequences uh, by uh, give a mercy to Thor, so basically he kratos and thor can uh, defeat uh, odin uh, so that's that's how you have a reasonable guess based on the context of the situations that the players will facing And uh, usually, uh, in the in the universal level designs, to make it the player access the information and play the game easily, um, and um, so that they can fulfill their tasks. So we reward the player with skill, imagination, intelligence, and dedication. Uh, for example, if you play the game, uh such as uh, uh, I'm talking about the famous games uh, Warcraft for example uh, if you build the if you in the side of the human for example you build the university so by right if you send the, your your soldier your soldier to the university they will learn a few tricks a few good tricks uh, on how to manage their skills, uh, especially on uh, combat skill. 
then they have the advantage to kill the enemy. Um, sometimes you give them the intelligence. Uh, if you're playing uh, something, uh, uh, first shootings, first person shootings games such as PUBG and all that, uh, they will be provided with intelligence and dedications so that they will they can further through their uh, task these four qualities used to distinguish a good player a uh, good player deserve to be rewarded yes it's always a good rewarded uh, system whereby if the player explore solve men solve the things uh, do his task basically they're always rewarded uh, rewards can be in many forms power up shortcut to the higher levels secret levels uh, mini games cut scenes um uh, wards and high scores uh, so usually uh, you need to inform the players they're really good they got they done they done a good job it's is the reward it's a reward system that always uh, needed to be put in the level designs. Okay. Um, another universal concept when you come up with the level designs is your rewards in a large way, punish in a small way. Um, logically and psychologically, humans love give uh manusia by by suka hadiah so it's kind of um, encouraging motivational if you always give them uh, uh, a reward and if they make a mistake although there is a punishment but uh, the punishment could be something very minimal for example, lower down their power, lower down their, uh, then they need to find resources to boost up their powers and all that. The hope of success motivates players more than the fear of failure. Yes, that's very correct. So that, that's why we are giving the hopes uh, by giving them more rewards, more power-ups, more beautiful options. So they, they can continue with their games. If a game repeatedly smacks them down hard, players will become discouraged and abandon the game with the feeling that they are being abused. Uh, that's why if you're trying to do the difficulty level checks on your game design, you must remember what is your intention to do that uh, difficulty level. If you plan to if you plan the players to explore this place the environments the world more often then you may might put uh, the uh, medium difficulty level because you want them to explore uh, the environment for example but if you want them just to finish their task maybe you might consider giving them the uh, easy difficulty levels on that level uh, so that they will they don't have the desire you know to abandon the games because our primary objective is to give the players an enjoyable experience it's always about uh, entertainment you must uh, remember Whenever you design uh, video games, entertainment is number one. Uh, and although if you design game for gamifications, which is a game into education, it also have the enjoyable experience side of it. Um, so the the key point here is will more rewards into your level than punishments. And uh, okay, now we're going to the uh, artificial opponents to put up a good fight and then lose. 
Um, so design the level so that the player will get better and better at overcoming the challenge until he succeeds at all of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, artificial opponents. You learn about the. This is quite tricky actually. Uh, this is the part when I remember doing game designs. Uh, we were. Uh, a few of us we are talking about this. We talking about this. Uh, how the character can be perfected, how we can make them perfect by giving their skills, intelligence, uh, until they succeed in uh, their tasks. Uh, that's why we need to. Start with the easy level, uh, giving them the the easy opponent. Um, if you started with the the opponent, doesn't have to be a big monster. It maybe it can be a small monster, something that you can kick, punch, and you got the marks and you got the rewards. Start with the simple ones, then you go to the intermediate one. Which is a big hairy monster that can beat you, but at the same time you can beat the monster. Until then, the player will understood and they will experience. Uh, they will understand the 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 the, game, the concepts of the games, and to make him better. Uh, for example, in a single player game, we always want the players to win eventually. Yes. Uh, an unbeatable level is a badly designed level. It's happened to the most of the games back in the 90s and the 2000s. Uh, for example, in the, in the war games, uh, designer tends to <clears throat> put the character uh, in a very progressive challenge. Uh, Whereby the player have the difficulty to overcome the um, task, so that's why uh, back in the nineties, uh, most of the war games are very difficult to play because uh, because of the unbeatable level, and uh, it considered as a badly designed uh, levels. So although sometimes you need to make sure uh, the war games is according to the history, but sometimes you need to loosen up. Kena, kita kena bagi, kita kena kurangkan difficulty level tu just for the player, you know, to have a good experience uh, so that they can learn. Walaupun sejarah mengatakan uh, mereka tewas ke apa ke. Tapi uh, there's always uh, ada kelebihan pada that level yang membuatkan mereka ingin teruskan uh, dalam war uh, series tu, for example. Okay, now we're moving to the implement multiple, multiple difficulty settings. Uh, make your game accessible to a wider audience. By allowing them to switch the difficult difficulty of your games, so true. Uh, switch between easy, normal, or hard setting, and easy game should mean easy. You gain nothing by restricting your game to only highly skilled players to enjoy it. So uh, start. It's always the remember start something easy. Uh, then. In between, you can start with the intermediate difficulty level into the difficult, difficult di, di, into the difficult uh, level. But it's always try to uh, try to give the old season player something to be challenged. Uh, even if you provide them with so many difficult, uh, easy, easy level. But you need also to uh, provide some challenge to the senior players. Uh, 
Um, so now in the new topics, which is general specific level design, uh, apply only to game with specific genres. Um, for example, in action games, vary the pace. Uh, action games put more stress on the player than any other genre does. So the universal principle vary the pace applies more strongly to action games than to other genres. Um, yes. Uh, for example, action games. Uh, action games apply. Uh, there are so many things that player should do need to do in the action games consider to the sports games consider to the fans games such as mario bros and all that so uh yes it put more stress on the player uh when they're playing the action games but that's the point of doing action games which is to make the player stress uh but if they achieve their goals basically they have a good rewards uh, and player must be able to rest both physically and mentally between bouts of high speed actions. Yes. Um, there's always try to loosen up your game design level. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, provide simple, um, simple opponents. Start with the simple opponents, then go to the monsters. Uh, then after the monster, then you have the, the highly skilled. Uh, killer for example so it's always start with something simple first something simple could be uh, in the forms of uh, humans or it can be forms of object if they manage to uh, shoot the object then they manage then sooner they can shoot the human for example is it's considered something that you uh, give them a relax uh, break moment. Okay, now we're going uh, to the uh, specific level design. I will touch in on these issues a bit and I'm sure I will continue uh, later on on this issue because there are many to talk about, especially when, uh, when it comes to the uh, genre on the strategy games. Uh, strategy games, yes, reward and planning. After you do some planning, um, you manage your soldier and all that, you have the rewards. By conquer a new place, uh, you manage to uh, conquer the goal factory, for example. And for the strategy games, strategy thinking means planning, anticipating an opponent's move and preparing a defense as well as attacks and considering an opponent possible defense move. In example, for example, when you're playing Warcraft, you plan all this, uh, you anticipate with your, you, you get engaged, and kita engage dengan kita punya opponents, tapi at the same time, kita prepare, we already prepare how to defend ourselves from the attacks and all that. So, this is the universal strategy uh, games. Uh, give player defensible location to build in an adventurous position to attack from. This is also going for the um, strategy games. Uh, you have a defensible locations. Usually, that's why we have uh, a castle, uh, kubu, we have kubu, we have castle, we have uh, uh, a big, very big house uh, and big house that cannot be penetrated uh, if you if they're using a heavy, highly machinery. So this is the, the, the key principle when you try to do with strategy games, you provide uh, defensible locations and but let the player discover these places for themselves so in a way for the players to discover uh, istana rumah uh, kubu yang kuat ni tapi mereka ada cara dia macam mana dia nak how they, they need to conquer that place first so that's uh, 
on strategy games um that's pretty much for today uh, there's lots of stuff that i need to talk about role-playing games the whereby i think uh, it's, it's enough for this one hour explanations about the uh, game level design concepts so we'll be continuing in my uh, letter soon uh, recorded online classes that will be uploaded via youtube okay guys thank you for your time for listening and takes time to learn about this uh, hoping to see you in the normal face-to-face -face class soon after hari raya all right thank you and goodbye